Okay, there I am again. Uh, I am in this video posting uh, a time lapse, 20 minute time lapse video of the painting Hilda with Yellow Rose. It is a painting uh, that is 130.130 centimeters, uh, and um, I worked with it for a couple of years ago, three years ago, two years, yeah, uh, something like that. And um, uh, there is a full uh, painting tutorial of that painting on my YouTube channel already, but I'm posting this time lapse video so you can see how see the process more rapidly and then you can go into the other video follow the links and stuff and see the whole thing if you want to see more of the detailed work I do okay um, I have to ask you to um, share my videos on social media it's very important that you do it's also important that you give them a thumbs up because it pushes them into the algorithm uh, share them on social media and uh, leave a comment and tell me what you think. I really like to hear from you, so please do that. And um, if you want to support my channel, you can uh, push the uh, Patreon button and give a one time donation or become a patron. It will really warm my heart. So thank you for watching and. Um, there is more coming. I'm working on a lot of paintings, so stay tuned. Until next time. Okay, here we are. Another time-lapse video. Here you can actually see me paint a full uh, oil painting from basically from the beginning to the end. It is a painting called Hilde with a yellow rose. And I painted it like three years ago, something like that. Finished it then. Uh, and um, as you can see here, <clears throat> I start out with the face. Actually, I didn't. I did film the first uh, sketch of the face too, but I, for some reason, I lost it or deleted it by accident. It was a bad day. But uh, you can actually see what happens in this video. As you can see, I'm painting on a toned canvas and the tone I use is um, uh, what I use as uh, to prepare the canvas is uh, ordinary gesso from Lascaux it is a quite thick gesso it's not so runny and I buy <coughs> I buy um, my canvases uh, prepped one time with ordinary gesso and then I prep it once or twice to get rid of the most of the um, uh, canvas texture and also to build some more strategic uh, textures with brushwork and uh, in in the gesso itself after that I I uh, let it dry and I take Ro Umbach usually actually use a Ro Umbach from uh, from um, uh, Winston Newton for that work because it has this greenish consistency uh, the one from um, Old Holland is more reddish. It's a great color, but uh, it's not that good for the toning of the canvas that I do. And I use uh, to tone the canvas. I only use a turpentine or turp, as it's called, and um, a thin layer, just with some paper or something that I put on the whole thing. There's actually video uh, on my YouTube channel. That shows you that process and there will also be more of them so stay tuned for that <clears throat> as you can see I kind of build my painting uh, I don't sketch before I start I just try to get the uh, I start with a face on the canvas uh, so I get uh, basically correct in comparison to the motif I'm using in this painting, I'm, I'm using uh, a photo that I took with my RC uh, Pentax RC 67 and uh, with the tungsten film or Diaz film. And I developed that film in a lab that I developed in. And I printed out with an Epson pr printer, a, uh, I think it's a two printer I have, which is gives very good quality. Um, 
uh, prints to print from. Uh, then I just start on the canvas uh, and um, start with a light. As you can see here, I'm building textures. I'm adding a lot of color because I know later I'm going to paint over this and I'm going to do many overpaints. And also in this painting, it is more, I, I kind of keep it a little bit impressionist. I don't go into... Um, any form of photorealism. I also actually like the paintings when they are more painted. Uh, I see there are photorealists out there uh, that are really good at that and they are using very small pencils and very detailed work but I'm more like a, I'm more like a late Rembrandt or Turner type of painter I think. But I also love the the paintings of Vermeer and if I at some point can become good enough to try to combine the clarity of Vermeer and the paintedness of Rembrandt I guess I would be getting somewhere. One has to realize that I, personally I started to paint when I was 21 and before that I was a welder an ordinary kid. I was a I was a quite a, a, a creative kid. I loved drawing and everything creative when I was a kid, but I stopped doing it until I was like 21. And when I started up again, I just f totally fell in love with painting. It was like uh, coming home in a way. Um, yeah, okay. And I just kept on doing it and. Um, but within the frame of my lifetime, it's going to be hard since I don't have a classical uh, education. It's going to be quite hard to become as good as the old masters. But I will do my best and uh, keep myself busy and honest uh, to try, try to achieve uh, at least half of what I wanna, would like to during this lifetime. As you can see, I just keep on adding the texture or adding the brushwork. I adjust and adjust and adjust. As you can see here, the canvas is quite big. And as you can see, I build here shadows and I build more shadows and more a little bit more detail. I mean, just, I just, I, I'm, I try not to get too hung up in one, at one point in a painting when I'm, when, especially when I'm sketching, I try to work around it. I try to kind of move around a little bit. And I remember a teacher I had in in um, in art school uh, way back in 1990s, uh, 1990 and 91. He saw that I was very focused on small parts of the the canvas or the drawings. And he tried to explain to me that I should try to move around a little bit more and um, not get that hung up in certain detail in the beginning. And there's probably something in that because if you get too hung up in one part, the two things that happen, you keep on screwing up maybe good things you already done and you actually don't get any further. So, yeah, I think it's quite important to to uh, you see sketch around I have built here the figure quite uh, uh, accurately it's very sketchy and then I start to to build the rest of the painting just add add and add and add and add yeah you can see here uh, you can see the, the palette when I use the palette I also have some videos uh, where I show you how I use the palette. When I use the palette and the medium, I actually don't add so much medium to the to the canvas. I was I jumped a little bit in to the future, <laughs> so you see I've done more work. When I use the palette, I don't I don't use much medium. Uh, my medium is based on um, uh, seventy percent turpentine, turp and 30% linseed oil with some 
stuff in it, uh, some cobalt thing in it. And uh, it will surface dry in a day or two if, uh, if it's thin layers and if it's thick layers, it will take longer. But when I paint, I try to paint uh, dry. Uh, I only start adding more oils and stuff uh, late in the process when I get into deeper detail later in the in the painting process. Uh, in the beginning, I basically uh, paint used to paint directly from the tube. I used the medium to wash the palettes and wash the brush brushes between layers uh, and in that process some medium will by accident get into or not even by accident will get into the paint which will make it dry a little bit faster uh, but basically I try to uh, do it quite um, dry. There you can see I just add more, more and more detail. It, it reminds me of a painting of um, of uh, Halfdan Egedius, a portrait of, well there's a Norwegian painter, you only become 21 actually, <clears throat> so he was he died of some uh, fungus stuff when uh, that uh, attacked his intestines uh, when he was 21. And um, his last words were, when he knew he was going to die, he said, Oh, oh, I, that we're going to create so much. And he sadly died. But the way I paint here reminds me of a portrait of a uh, farmer girl that he was in love with, Marie Clarsen was her name I can remember it now and uh, the way he had painted that is very thick layers wearing a lot of brushwork and uh, in a more late 1800 uh, uh, impressionist style but also with uh, it was before before painting just dissolved into to total modern um, modernity um, so it was kind of in between that Delacroix, it can actually re be reminded of Delacroix. I also love Delacroix and uh, if you look at Delacroix's brushwork, he is using the colors in a very sculptural way, uh, rough uh, and quite sculptural. The paint I use is Old Holland paint and I use Old Holland for many reasons or two or three reasons actually first of all it has the most uh, pigment in it and a very low amount of filler uh, it has this thickness to it that makes it very nice to mold almost like clay and yeah and there's not much oil in it uh, so you won't get that problem with it cracking up later if you add too much and yeah so and um, yeah it's basically why I use it actually so it wasn't that many reasons as you can see here I just keep on painting over it is when I paint it's more like a puzzle I just keep on moving things around i should actually start doing more clay work maybe some reliefs and and stuff and do some uh, some um, uh, heads uh, some craniums something from clay because i have definitely a sculpture in me and i also have this uh, uh, impressionist in me which i will let a little bit more loose in some uh, some landscapes I'm going to do so I'm going to try to go more uh, loose uh, without losing the substance of course which I find very important to keep in other paintings I will try to go as clear 
clear at the same time as painted at po as possible. So I have a lot to do, actually, uh, a lot to cape over, as they say in Norwegian. <laughs> the reason why this uh, time lapse is quite long, it's like 20 minutes long, is because my painting tutorials or lessons are very long. So if I should, if I should um, make them like <clears throat> like five minutes or ten minutes, they would just go too fast, and you would actually miss much of the the brushwork and stuff like that. So that is why I prefer to make them a little bit longer. Uh, no choice there, <laughs> really. As you can see, it's very fast now too, so it can actually be a little bit of, a little bit confusing, for people. When I do, when I do, <laughs> you can see here what I do. I just, I add first a darker color, then I add a brighter color, and then I add a darker color again, and then I just, I just keep on moving the paint around with different tones and the funny thing is that when I started out painting everything was extremely rigid and it is down to the fact that as you become a better painter you will start to uh, being able to see more into the future how things will turn out when you start out painting and you don't know much about it, uh, you have problems f with foresight and you will just stumble around until you find it out how, how you're actually going to do it. It is the same thing if you should start playing the piano from scratch. Uh, maybe you have a tune. Uh, you have maybe the Moonlight Sonata or something like that, and you're gonna try to learn to play the piano. You have the piano, you have your hands, and you have the music, which in this case would be the object. And if you don't have any schooling, you will just have to figure out the notes by yourself, and you have to figure out everything yourself. And that's a hard way to learn. But it's a way to learn that sticks. So when you start, when you then you start learning from your mistakes, actively learning from your mistakes, and when you do that, it sticks. As I say, uh, and nothing is better. There's no better way to learn than mistakes. Actually, Elton Musk is doing that with a Starship project he has, is doing. He he blows up these starships and he just learns from his mistakes and uh, and evolves it real time basically and that is also what I do I learn actually something new from every single painting I am doing and I still learn as a kid I'm in a month time I will be 52 and I still learn like a kid and now with no pain in my, or almost no pain in my hips and my brain is clearing up after three years with excruciating pain, I will actually go back to learning much faster and being able to paint as I used to. So I'm looking forward to the, to the last 30 years of my life to get a lot of things done. You know, the average man in Norway uh, live until 80, so... I don't give myself any special treatment there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to, as I said in the beginning, if you want to support my channel, you can go to Patreon and sign up for a dollar or five. If you sign up for five dollars, you will be able to uh, get my Patreon giveaway, which is one small painting a month. And with this, I hope to see you in my next video, leave a comment and share with your social media and tell me what you think. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay cool.